Ladies and gentlemen, our program chair, James Hare. Good afternoon, everyone. Remember me? I think this is the first Wikimania where we had two plenary sessions in one day, and somehow we made it work. So anyways, enough of the introductions. I'd like to invite onto the stage the Archivist of the United States, Mr. David Ferriero. Good afternoon. Welcome to Washington. Thanks especially for inviting me to meet with you this afternoon. As I was just saying backstage, you would never get a group other than this kind of group to meet on a Saturday afternoon. I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. And the National Archives is very proud to be a partner in this conference. As you all know, I'm a huge fan of Wikipedia for reasons I'll discuss in a moment. And I'm a huge fan of all of you here today who are leading the way in connecting Wiki Wikipedia with the GLAM community, galleries, libraries, muse archives, and museums. And after all these years, it's really nice to finally have my community recognized as GLAM. <laughs> the National Archives has a unique role which we describe as preserving the past to protect the future. The beautiful sculptures designed by Robert Aiken and chiseled by the Piccarilli brothers of the Bronx at the Pennsylvania entrance echo this. The past is represented by an ancient bearded man with a scroll. The future is a young woman with a book, which I like to think is an iPad. She sits atop a pedestal inscribed with the past is prologue. As archivist of the United States, a bit of my personal prologue may be instructive. I graduated from college just before Bill Gates and Paul Allen founded Microsoft, and Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak founded Apple. And the internet, it was an interesting DARPA technology experiment. I still remember when the very first fax machine replaced Telex in the telecommunications office at MIT and when the fax was received, it was immediately put into the campus mail for delivery. <laughs> and when the Christian Science Monitor was experimenting with delivery by microwave, delivery across the Charles River to a printer in my library reading room on the MIT campus, and the world of microforms and mediated database searching in CD-ROM towers. Coping with dizzying changes in information technology has certainly been a challenge for those of us who got our start back in the day. But I would argue that the institutions where many of us built careers confront an even bigger challenge than replacing selectric typewriters with networked PCs. Those institutions struggle with re replacing traditional ways of thinking with new ones. The challenge has been especially daunting for archives and libraries and museums, which are often more comfortable preserving the past than embracing, and more importantly, anticipating the future. I still remember a seminal article in the library literature from the 1960s, a very important study that was done on the, by the Council on Library Resources, which predicted that there was no role for computers in libraries. <laughs> which brings me to Wikipedia. If you look up Charles Van Doren in Wikipedia, the first thing you'll see is that he was caught up in the 1950s quiz show scandals. But he was also a distinguished scholar and editor of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Van Doren once said, because the world is radically new, the ideal encyclopedia should be radical too. Wikipedia's challenge is that archives and libraries and museums tend to be wary of anything radical. So let's talk about some ways of meeting that challenge. I'll start by bragging about the evolving relationship between the National Archives and Wiki Wikipedia, and then try to draw some lessons that may be useful for other cultural institutions, and perhaps even for the future of our democracy. I know that some of you have used the National Archives for scholarly or personal research, and I hope that some of you got to attend one of the several tours we offered to 
Wikimania participants over the last few days. The core mission of the National Archives remains unchanged from the day we were created as a federal agency in 1934. We preserve records that are created by the United States government. More than 275 agencies and the White House, and we provide courtesy storage for the records of Congress. For federal agencies, we preserve about 2 to 3 percent of all government records that are, that are important for legal or historic reasons. That may not sound like very much, but we now hold approximately 12 billion sheets of paper. 12 billion sheets of paper translates into 1.4 million trees. If you laid those pieces of paper end to end, they would circle the globe 84 times. 18 million maps, charts, and architectural drawings, miles and miles of film and video, and 42 million photographs. 5.3 billion electronic records. In our collection, you'll find the most important documents in our history, starting with the Oaths of Allegiance signed by George Washington and his troops at Valley Forge, to the tweets being generated by the White House as I speak. And of course, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights are charters of freedom. We have records and facilities around the country, 14 regional archives, 17 federal records centers, 13 presidential libraries, all of the military records in St. Louis and our facilities here in Washington and College Park, Maryland. And that collection is growing, especially the electronic records. To give you a sense of scale, we started collecting electronic mail during the Reagan White House in 1996. And we have 8 million email messages from that administration. We have 20 million emails from the Clinton administration and 240 million from the George W. Bush administration. And as the president has reminded me, not one of them is his. While our core mission remains unchanged, the National Archives is very much a living organization, one that evolves to meet new challenges. When the archives began, the challenge was just finding the records. Twenty years later, the sheer volume of government records was a huge problem. And in the 21st century, one of our biggest challenges is finding ways to preserve records when information technology changes so rapidly, often making last year's records obsolete. At the same time, the National Archives is about more than simply keeping records safe and sound. Thomas Jefferson said, information is the currency of democracy. To keep democracy healthy and vibrant, I believe strongly that that currency must be circulated, available, and put to use by as many people as possible. Here's how President Obama put it when he issued his open government directive at the beginning of his administration. My administration is committed to creating an unprecedented level of openness in government. We will work together to ensure the public trust and establish a system of transparency, public participation, and collaboration. Openness will strengthen our democracy and promote efficiency and effectiveness in government. And on his first day in office, in a meeting with his senior staff, he laid out the foundation of his administration, a foundation which certainly resonated with this librarian, minding his own business at the New York Public Library. He said, our commitment to openness means more than simply informing the American people about how decisions are made. It means recognizing that government does not have all the answers and that public officials need to draw on what citizens know. And that's why, as of today, I'm directing members of my administration to find new ways of tapping the knowledge and expertise of ordinary citizens, scientists and civic leaders, educators and entrepreneurs, because the way to solve the problems of our time as one nation is by involving the American people and shaping the policies that affect their lives. And this citizen engagement is something which I have taken to heart as I've assumed my duties as archivist of the United States. Last month, when I announced the release of our updated open government plan for 2012-2014, I noted that we have dramatically increased our participation with Wikipedia since the last open government plan two years ago. In introducing the plan, I wrote that our work with Wikipedia is changing the way we think about our own archival work. At the archives, the concepts of openness and access are embedded in our mission. And the work we do every day is rooted in the belief that citizens have the right to see, examine, and learn from the records that guarantee citizens' rights 
document government actions and tell the story of our nation. My biggest challenge is visibility. Not everyone knows who we are, what we do, or more importantly, the amazing resources we collect and house. The lesson I learned during my time in New York was that it isn't good enough to create great digital collections and sit back and expect people to find you. You need to be where the people are. So our efforts are focused on getting our content onto all the existing and emerging Web 2.0 platforms. Right now, you'll find us on YouTube, Flickr, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Foursquare, and on many, many blogs. We use IdeaScale to, to ask for public and staff input on projects. We've launched projects on the White House's challenge.gov platform. We're sharing open source code on GitHub. And we have several social media platforms of our own, including our archives wiki and the Citizen Archivist dashboard. And, we've made, and we have mo mobile apps available for both Android and iOS. And we're streamlining ways for the public to connect with us and contribute as well through our Citizen Archivist dashboard, a portal which puts members of the public to work on tasks like tagging our catalog records and indexing our census records, but also in transcribing National Archives documents on Wikisource and improving articles on Wikipedia. Our growing relationship with Wikipedia is one of the newest and most important ways we're making real the public's right to see, examine, and learn from the records. To introduce you to this evolving relationship between the National Archives and Wikipedia, let me tell you about a young man who has been one of, of your speakers at this week's conference. His name is Dominic McDevitt Parks, a graduate student at my... Dominic is a graduate student at my alma mater, Simmons College. He's wicked young and describes himself as a history buff, a word nerd, a news junkie, and an occasional pedant. Most importantly, he's the archive's first Wikipedian in residence. He is in a rather exclusive club. There are only a handful of these folks in the world who have the responsibility of fostering collaboration among the Wikipedia and GLAM communities. And I know several current and former Wikipedians and residents are in the room, ranging from as near to us as the, as the Smithsonian and as far away as Sweden. When we brought Dominic on board in May 2011, our hope was that by hosting a Wikipedian in residence and by talking about the benefits of working with the Wikimedia Foundation, the National Archives would help lead the GLAM charge. Since then, 16 of our peer institutions around the world have brought Wikipedians on board. That's, including, that's according to the Wikipedian in residence page on Wikipedia, of course. We know firsthand that many Wikipedians in the United States, as well as an impressive and growing array of institutions, have been working hard in the past year to build a strong community that will be able to guide the future of GLAM partnerships. And I welcome the announcement of the, Wik of the GLAM Wiki Consortium earlier this week and thank Laurie Phillips, Wikimedia's U.S. Cultural Partnerships Coordinator, for her pioneering work. Founder Jimmy Wales described Wikipedia's goal this way, to give a free encyclopedia to every person in the world in their own language, not just in a free beer kind of way, but also in the free speech kind of way. So it won't surprise you that our Wikipedia in residence is not just giving the public free beer, access to permanent records of the archives, but he's also encouraging people to use those records in a free speech kind of way. He works to get as many online volunteers as possible to discuss, react to, and build on that content. Here's an example. The Archives website has a feature called Today's Document. It's a photo or a document with a small explanatory bl blurb, one we think would be especially interesting to the public. When we posted a photo of the first Afri African American recruit for the US Marine Corps, Dominic worked to get it placed on Wikipedia's main page. He challenged the Wikipedia community in a nice National Archives way to learn more about the photo and even write an article about it. Sure enough, it led to a brand new Wikipedia article about desegregation in the Marine Corps. 
our Wikipedia in Residence program and the new and better forms of cooperation he's developing with the Wikipedia community even as we speak started well over a year ago when the National Archives hosted the Washington DC celebration of Wikipedia's 10th anniversary in 2011. Over 90 Wikipedians enjoyed lightning talks, on-conference sessions, and behind-the-scenes tours of the stacks at the National Archives. It was a meeting of the minds among National Archives staff who introduced our records and online resources and Wikipedians who taught us more about this terrific information source. At the event, one Wikipedian blogger wrote, now we can all say, if Wikipedia is good enough for the Archivist of the United States, maybe it should be good enough for you. Our work with Wikipedia is not only good enough, it's great for us because it takes our goals of transparency, public participation, and collaboration to a new level. And since that first meeting, the National Archives has continued to collaborate with the Wikimedia community. We've hosted several events on our sites across the country, including a multi-day glam camp, DC, last February, as well as the first Wikipedian Scanathon in Kansas City at our regional facility there earlier this summer an event at the Reagan Library in Southern California, and several more in the DC area. Texts from the National Archives that have been transcribed and verified on Wikisource are linked to directly from our catalog on archives.gov. Wikimedia Commons now contains over 90,000 digital images from our records, and more will continue to be added. We value the contributions Wiki Wikimedians have made as citizen archivists, and we share many of the same values with the Wikimedia Foundation, collaboration, innovation, and the sharing of free knowledge. You know, when the bank robber Willie Sutton was asked why he robbed so many banks, Sutton replied, because that's where the money is. The archives is involved with Wikipedia because that's where the people are. Just a couple of examples. We're very proud of the National Archives website, especially since we re relaunched it last year. It's less cluttered, easier to, use, easier to navigate, and allows researchers from amateurs to professionals to better find what they're looking for. And our entire website, which includes 20,000 web pages, got over 17 million visits last year, which isn't bad. Our today's document, which I mentioned earlier, is currently available on, as both iPhone and Android apps, as well as a popular um, Tumblr blog since we launched, launched these, these apps have been downloaded over 50,000 times. And the Tumblr blog has a following of over 25,000. And that's not, thank you. <laughs> I think there are a thousand of you here and I hope you're all following. <laughs> but when that single Marine Corps photo appeared on the main Wikipedia page that I mentioned, it was viewed at least four million times in eight hours four million times. So at that point, when we were using Tumblr and Dominic put that up, we ordinarily got about a thousand visits. So we went from a thousand to four million just by using Wikipedia. Isn't that great? Another example, I've known, I know that um, uh, battleships are a big deal on Wikipedia. <laughs> the English Wikipedia have a vi has a vibrant community of editors which has created a tremendous amount of quality content. Well, last year in commemoration of the anniversary of the attack on, of the attack on Pearl Harbor, the featured article on Wikipedia's main page was the USS Arizona, the battleship sunk during the battle. There were multiple National Archives images used in the article, includes two of the images that were digitized on request by staff from NARA's photographic division. That article received over 150,000 views in two days, making it one of Wikipedia's most viewed feature articles. And one of the article's primary authors was in the audience when I spoke at the Wikimedia, Wikipedia Higher Education Summit in Boston almost a year ago. That same editor, Eddie Earhart, is in the audience again today. Hello, Eddie. <laughs> and 
And a shout out too to Jason Long, his co-editor, who isn't with us today. Overall, 42% of Americans turn to Wikipedia for information, so it's a terrific way for us to make archives content more transparent and available. And I've been part of that 42% for a long time. In fact, it's, off, it's often the first place I go for information. Now I have to admit that Wikipedia... <laughs> Now, I have to admit that Wikipedia first got my attention when I was at the New York Public Library, and I came across my own profile on the site. <laughs> Someone who is still unknown to me, and if you're in the audience, I'd like to meet you, <laughs> had put it up. And it was very fair and complete, except for my date of birth, <laughs> which I went in and corrected. <laughs> It had me a year younger than I really am. <laughs> to be sure, not everyone is as enthusiastic about Wikipedia as I am, which brings me to my last quote about encyclopedias. The first person I quoted today was a scholar, the second was a founder, and this one was a major league catcher, Yogi Berra. Yogi said, I'm not going to buy my kids an encyclopedia, let them walk to school like I did. Okay, this is probably one of those quotes that's too good to be true, but it illustrates the misunderstandings that can arise around a reference source. In my view, that's the case with Wikipedia and cultural and academic institutions. For many information professionals in higher education and in archives, Wikipedia is suspect. I've heard the concerns about accuracy and reliability, as I'm sure you have. And yet comparative studies by neutral observers show errors do, do not appear more frequently in Wikipedia than in its printed counterparts. I would argue that the power people have to flag or change incorrect or biased content means errors can be fixed and neutrality contested. But what about you? What can those of you who believe in Wikipedia do to overcome skepticism and strengthen the ties between your institutions and this great resource? First of all, keep doing what you're doing. At the archives, we've found that the best way to overcome misconceptions about Wikipedia is to encourage people to use and work with it. In particular, encourage your colleagues to write for Wikipedia. It's a terrific learning opportunity, exposing staff to the experience of collaboration, feedback, and even conflict in pursuit of new knowledge. In addition, instead of telling staff and the public to shun Wikipedia, our institutions should be critical consumers of information, an increasingly important tool in the digital age. And as Wikipedians, be bold, but collegial. Together with the Wikimedia Foundation, we can work to expose GLAM staffs to the terrific ways the free encyclopedia can help them achieve their institution's mission. And some advice to our international visitors. Get to know the archivist of your country. He or she can use your help and would welcome your interest and passion. I'll be meeting with them in Australia in August and urging them to reach out to you. So jump the gun and reach out to them first. And if all else fails, you can tell them if it's good enough for the archivist, we should at least take a look. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, David, for your excellent speech. Um, it was a great opportunity in the D.C. area when National Archives appointed their first Wikipedian in residence, and it's a relationship that we are very proud of. The newest Wikipedian in residence was announced at the Google opening reception. The World Digital Library is looking for a Wikipedian in residence to help with documenting global cultural heritage. Now, over the course of our conference, you've probably seen our great event planner, Julie Perlmutter, working behind the scenes. I'm telling you now so that you don't miss it later. After we've finished our time here at Lisner, we'll depart together for our group photo. And at that time, Julie will move from behind the scenes to the front. Look for Julie's big blue hair to lead us. So how did, so how did Wikimania end up in Washington, DC this year? Well, at the beginning of each year, there is a bidding process. Each city that is interested in hosting is 
launches a bid led by a group of avid volunteers. They get the, they make the case for bringing Wikimania to their city and then an impartial jury decides where to host it. And for this year, they have selected Washington, D.C. For next year, they will be hosting Wikimania in Hong Kong. And now I'd like to... <laughs> And now, as is the tradition of Wikimania, I would like to invite onto the stage next year's Wikimania organizing team. Good afternoon. Oops. That's a huge mic. And suppose most of people know me. And do you remember me? <laughs> yes. And I'm Jerry. <laughs> I think, please go to the video because you, the controller seems really exciting. And I suppose, because when we're trying to find a video, or thinking of we are taking our own video, we just found this video by the Hong Kong Tourism Board, so fantastic, and we cannot surpass it, we just use it. And you have noticed that when you come in, we have this little thing from the Hong Kong Tourism Board on your either right-hand side and right-hand side, left-hand side or right-hand side, yeah. So it's actually a bag. And it's a shopping bag, so probably you in Hong Kong, you have to bring your own bag full of Hong Kong, right? So that is actually, I have to solemnly thank you, say a thank you to Hong Kong Tourism Board because they have arranged all this shipment from Hong Kong and everybody should have one, yes. And they are, all, they are already on board and planning some surprise on our opening ceremony. So, looking forward to it. And to start our slides, rather boring, the first one I have to announce that is actually the fifth birthday of our Hong Kong chapter today. Yes, so it's a crazy idea. Is once Phoebe said, Having a Wikimania in DC was a crazy idea. Actually, I personally have banned many times that having a Wikimania in Hong Kong. Even somebody here had listened to me personally to saying that. But eventually, we have found so many partners in Hong Kong, and eventually we got this bid. So it's really amazing thing, and maybe a roller coaster for us, yes. So we are here. And somewhere in the middle of the roller coaster, yeah, we're going to head in another year of roller coastering, yeah. So that is the point. So we better let you ensure a bit about what is going on next year. 
Before that, I have to review something new. It's totally new because, as you see, that we have never changed our banners and logos since our bid, because we are planning a new one, and that is our new logo and banner, and will be official, because it's. <laughs> and let me explain a little bit, because the blue one you. You obviously know that is something called Hong Kong Crete. Yes, that is you know buildings, everything, hot skyscrapers. But look, notice that Wikimedia Green thing, the in the color of Wikimedia Green is actually the Lion Lion Rock, which is the one of the famous mountain in Hong Kong, and also reminds you Hong Kong is not just Hong Kong Crete because we have a lot of things fun in the wild. Yes, there is. Plenty of wild in Hong Kong. It, actually, I'm not meaning Lan Kwai Fong. Okay, you probably know that you can get really wild there. But you can really get into somewhere like the country parks in the wild, because 80% is still green. Yeah, in Hong Kong, only 20. We're just living in a tiny 20% of land. Yeah, so that is the point. So. This is the real Hong Kong Crete, okay? <laughs> and it's somewhere in the Hong Kong's highest building. You have, uh, yeah, something like that, like the Empire State version, okay? Hong Kong version of Empire State. You can see all around something like this. And also, you know that it's about food. <laughs> you probably try and hit pretty a lot in Chinatown or in the Seventh Street, down the Seventh Street, right, Sarah? So, so it's, it's the real thing, okay? <laughs> okay, we'll talk about venue. Venue is somewhere we call, okay, I always get this wrong, is Polytechnic University, yes, because I don't want to mad our partners by reading the wrong name. So that is the point. And it's actually quite beautiful. And this photo is taken from the ICC, right? No, okay. Okay. <laughs> Taking from our organizer, one of our organizer, Ellen's home, and you are quite easily to recognize that it's something really red, reddish, okay? And this is the so-called uh, auditorium, Jockey Cup Auditorium, and it will be our main hall. It's a little bit like this, but it's slightly slimmer, but is much higher, you know. Everything goes to air, goes up to air in Hong Kong. So we don't have many space, okay? So eventually, we all know Hong Kong is, uh, you know, a city by the sea, okay? So we have to, because everybody is so excited about Haifa speech. And so we got a Hong Kong speech. And yeah, it will be a beach party. And of course, I originally wanted to tell a joke, but I don't want to tell here. Yeah. <laughs> so finally, well, it's all about fun, but still, Hong Kong is something, yeah, a lot of things is a connecting point, and in the middle of, yeah, Asia, yeah, I hope so, one, as, at least in the one side, in the, in a, inside of latitude, okay, not longer to, okay. So, so is somewhere is many ideas, many things, because we have the freedom of speech and rather good legal system. So we are trying to have, of course, this is something from our unofficial anthem, okay? So, and that is the case. So we are, we are trying to get, because we are using the first line, first two lines will be the motto of our conference, trying to overcome those difference and pursuit our Wikipedia dream. So, see you all in next year. And before that, I would like to introduce my team, of course, because I used to want to be before the video, but you know, the video guy just pump up the video. So, uh, you know, I'm Jerry, and also the, the so called the general coordination, and also another guy is Mr. Chen again. Okay, Tango. 
and he is he is the also the general coordination, but really focus on the money stuff. Okay, and next to him, step up, step up, step up. Yeah, Vincent, and he is the logistic guy. And and Derek come up, and that that is a really other problem because he's also Mr. Chan. So in the in Hong Kong during the Wikimania, you probably shout, "I want to help from Mr. Chan." You got a re response, okay? So he's Derek Chan. Many people probably know him because he already helping on our international affairs, and he will keep on going called the global engagement, okay? And. Next one is Alan, and he will be our media guy. Yeah. And the final one is Simon, and he will be responsible for programs and scholarship and all kinds of community stuff. So thank you very much, and we are looking forward to seeing you in Hong Kong. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Nicholas Bishur. I am the Deputy Coordinator for Wikimania 2012. We are very fortunate uh, to have been the opening uh, location for the first ever uh, Wikimania, uh, Wikimania store, Wikimedia store, sorry. Um, all of you got your t-shirts from there, and then they had a, um, a place uh, where you can win a free uh, prototype t-shirt. So if we can get James Alexander to come to the stage and draw the winner of the uh, free t-shirts. <laughs> I think to make it simple, we're going to draw two, but I have more than that. Can you hear me? All right. I think to make it simple, we're going to draw two, but we have more than that. So the two are going to tell them can choose whatever they want. And then, anybody else who's here tomorrow and stops by the desk, first come, first serve any of the uh, uh, prototypes we had out there. And I thank, want to thank everybody for the amount of feedback you gave. We had a huge list that we're going to be able to go through, probably pick the ones that are good and can go up onto the store. And we have at least a good 50 or 60 pe ones that people came in and drew what they wanted to see, which was exactly what we were actually looking for here, rather than mostly selling. So thank you. And then first, Nicholas. Uh, tick, ticket. Uh, ticket number 516178. Uh, the name is Barclay Bezenar. Bezenar. <laughs> and the second winner is uh, Oscar Rasco. Ticket number 516181. So uh, see James Alexander after. <laughs> we were also very fortunate this year to have Wikimedia Deutschland as one of our uh, conference partners. They had a booth that I hope everybody here visited, and they also um, are having a drawing to win some German goodies. Uh, so please welcome Kasia from Wikimedia Deutschland. Hi, everybody. Uh, I would like to thank everybody who passed by our booth and uh, took part in our activities that we offered, like speed dating. Uh, of course, it wasn't about finding a boyfriend or girlfriend. It was about talking about free knowledge. And we also had this magic, <laughs> magic, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> uh, we also had this magic green box uh, that some of you put your names in it, and I'm going to do the drawing, and let's see who's going to be the lucky winner. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to... Uh, oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wiki user Viswa Prabha. Right. 
but please. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, we have a German, mysterious German goodies bag full of nice things from Berlin. <laughs> Um, and now we have some uh, amazing statistics. Can we get both of these to work? <laughs> uh, we have some amazing statistics about uh, Wikimedia 2012. <laughs> um, there were 87 countries represented here this year. And there are 3,791 lunches served. We had 700 people who attended our Google opening reception. And there were 5,424 cups of coffee enjoyed. We had over 270 speakers, although citation is needed. And there were over 1,200 attendees at our opening ceremony on Thursday. Uh, and if we can get a drum roll, um, there were nearly 1,400 registered attendees over six days. Do you want to say, uh, can I say something? Oh. Um, when we started this in, we started the bid in January of 2011. And over the course of a bit more than a year, I got the chance to meet some really amazingly incredible people, people who I did not ever know or have dreamed of knowing, and, um, and inter international people, uh, people from DC. Um, I've been here for three years, and the best year of my life was this year organizing this amazing conference. So I want to thank everybody. And um, I want to thank particularly um, Katie Filbert. <laughs> Katie, uh, Katie is an amazing individual. Uh, she, get, she deserves all the credit. She's been a, an instrumental part of this conference. I cannot say enough good words about her. She is sitting right there, streaming the session, even though we couldn't get live streaming. She is incredible, she is amazing, and, I, and Wikimedia Deutschland, you took her away from us. Please send her back, we love her. Um, and we have other people to thank too, James. Yes, I'd also love to thank our program director, Tiffany Smith, who has put together our excellent program with the help of our program committee, including the co-chairs, Doror Lin and Orshaya Guinness. I'd also like to thank the, our scholarship leads, Jesse Wild and Sage Ross. Thanks to their help, we were able to get attendees from the United States and 86 other countries. And additionally, I'd like to thank Chad Horaho, who has worked on our registration system, made it as good as it could possibly have been, and has been a tremendous help during Wikimania too. And finally, I'd like to thank Danny B and his legion of volunteers. And I invite all these people up onto the stage right now. I told I said that. Yes, all volunteers, please come up on stage. These are the people that made Wikimania 2012 happen.
wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Guys, guys. James, Nick, you don't think we'd let you off this lightly, huh? Everyone, could I please have a huge round of applause for Nicholas Bashur, our conference co-chair. And for James Hare, our conference chair. I'd like to thank all of you for making my wildest dreams possible. Thank you. And uh, we also want to personally thank, uh, where is she, Julie? Julie Perlmutter. It's, it's actually good that you see her because she's the person who you're going to follow. I guess she's out in the back. Oh, there she's over there with the blue hair. She's our event planner. She is amazing. We've been working with her. I've gotten to know her personally. She is a great, great individual. Thank you so much. Um, thanks to the Wikimedia Foundation for being a, a, an amazing part. And thank you, everybody. So we're going to go ahead and go and take our group photo right now. Follow the lady with the blue hair. <laughs> 